Like my new message, my new message to trying to get across to the little young niggas in the hood. If you want to be a goon, I'm gonna tell you like this. I never tell niggas. I, don't, I never tell the kids or the young dudes in the street. I never say don't do that. If you want to be a goon, be a goon. You know it come with the death of jail come with that. So it's some, don't tell. There's some niggas out here that's gonna hit you the fuck up, and it's a judge now, CJC, that's gonna give you a hundred years. But if you want to be a a self-made millionaire. A king, a king of oneself, the head of your family, somebody to take care of your mother, your family. Uh, hustle hard, man, get some money. If it took me, if it took me, ten, how long y'all seen me rapping? Listen, we, we I've been rapping since I, I born, how long have I been man. rapping, Vaughn? Since that school right there. That's the elementary Yeah, my, that's my elementary school right there. Douglas, I, I probably was in fourth grade when we was rapping. I probably was, which, how old you be in the fourth grade, 10? I was 10 when I started rapping. I'm 26. That's 16 years. I just started getting money three years ago. That's 13 years. If it take me 13 years to get this money, why can't it take you 13 years? Don't hate on me because it took me 13 years. I was, I was broke for 13 years. It take a nigga 13 years to get to some money. How you gonna hate? You can't hate him. It took the, I was broke. Yeah, when you see me, I had nappy braids. Yeah, my stomach was hurting. It really was hurting. I really starved some nights, man. I mean, so if it could take me 13 years, why well, can't it take you seven? Get on your grind. Start now. Don't wait till you're 36. Start now while you're in your 20s or while you're in your teens and get the money. So that's my new message. I'm trying to get over the kids. I see go to Chicago, see them killing each other, all that. Me personally, I got respect. I got love for the gangs. We ain't into that shit. Be with your family, motherfuckers that's working with you, standing with you every day, grinding with you. That's who count. Know what I mean? Your, your mother gonna be there, your sister, your family, your cousins, your niggas you with every day gonna be there. All that shit, man, don't mean nothing. If I died, I know I died trying to take a take a take a sacrifice for my whole family and, and change my whole shit around. My little cousins think they could be rich. They 10. They think when they grow up and be 19, they're gonna be rich. You could grind for five, six, seven years and be a king, self-made millionaire. Choose one, man. We just trying to win. That's what we trying to do. Dream chases we in the building. I got paid seventeen thousand dollars per episode. What? Season one? The first two, three seasons. Whoa! Wow. This was me getting the network pregnant with my idea. Mm. So, in concept, you know, I would have got paid more to just go to the nightclub and wait. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't. It, it was like taking. A, it's me wanting the show to be the way I want it to be. You know what I'm saying? Like power. This shit turned out like I expected it to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if Courtney, she was doing some shit, an idea, she would call me and tell me. We talk about things constantly. And whatever. I didn't dictate everything that she did, but what I w she would do is while we're talking, she'd go, say that again? Mm. Like, I say something, and she'll go, say that again, and she'll write it down. So she's just retaining everything. And it would show up in the material. But it made, there's no telling if it showed up in Tasha's character, if it showed up in this character, if it showed up. But she knows what I'm saying is authentic and is right. real. And she was using it consistently, you know what I'm saying? And that's the kind of talent in Courtney that not every writer, showrunner has that. Right. The most expensive thing we spend is time. Because mm. we can't get it back. Mm. And, and when you look at the highlight reel, whether the person's rich, poor, in the middle, wherever they're at, right? They, uh, they still have so many moments. Look, before I had money, when I'm rich in the middle, when I'm poor, when I'm in the middle, when I'm rich, regardless, I've been on each one of those portions of the journey. Right. I had fun. The when you grow up without finances, the uh, you, you start to view financial freedom becomes really important. You know, you start to nice. be conscious of what you because the restraints, the biggest restraint, is something that costs. You know, I had to convince myself that uh, I'm gonna make it. You know, regardless of how people felt at the at that time. And what what it does is it makes it makes you feel like, well, it made me feel like um, there's gonna be points that people are gonna mistake my confidence for arrogance because I've had to. They don't understand the process I went through mm -hmm. and how much I had to believe in myself in order to make these things happen. I kind of. I feel like you can will yourself into a good space. Mm -hmm. like, things that are meant to happen will. And if you believe in yourself enough, you can help yourself learn. You can inspire you know, yourself in different ways where you can actually discipline yourself. Mm -hmm. 
you know, to the point that you can become good enough. Like from 97, like when I started writing, it was full time. Like every day I was writing music because I had no choice. If I was going to stop hustling, then how was I going to provide or create, continue the lifestyle that I created for my son's mom, my son, and myself.